Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective. And today, this one is kind of special. We have essentially a family reunion here. This is going to be primarily about the T430U, which is this machine over here with this beautiful customized carbon fiber wrap. And Kamish was so kind to provide this uh, for the channel and for filming. What just a, a beautiful specimen. Uh, I gotta say, you've taken very good care of that machine and it just serves as such a fine example. Now, what we have in the middle is the T430S and then of course the T430 on the far left. If you haven't seen or know nothing about the T430, it's considered to be one of the best mid-range uh, in terms of age uh, T-series out there. So much customizability, you need to learn about it over here. And then I'll also be putting up a link on the T430S a little later on. Now, the only one that's missing here is the T431, which I did feature in another video many years ago. And that machine is probably just as odd as this one over here. Now, let's turn our attention primarily to the T430U. Now, the T430U is actually the thinnest of all three of these machines. And there was never another U after this one. It was kind of a one-off. They were doing a lot of experimentation, and I think you're going to see that shine through quite clearly in this video. So the T430U was first launched in 2012 and lasted until 2014. And you can already tell by looking at it that there are some familiar things, but there are some unfamiliar things as well. So it was lighter than the T430, and it was also thinner. The T430 was 29 millimeters thick, the T430S was 26 millimeters thick, and the T430U, which you see before you, is 21 millimeters thick. To make that happen, a lot of things had to be cut out or kind of reconfigured. So you're gonna notice a few things missing. The first is, is that we have absolutely no docking port on the bottom of the machine. There is also no uh, display lid latch to open and close the device. There is no optical drive of any kind on this machine as well, and the roll cage has been essentially redesigned and reinforced with aluminum components top and bottom. It also has an aluminum lid to help with that. Now, if we compare it against the T430S, which is its closest kind of relative, there are a few similarities, but there are also a few differences. So the T430S still obviously has that optical drive, whereas the T430U does not. It also does not have a backlit keyboard option, whereas the T430 and T430S did. These examples uh, don't have it. However, this will have a think light, but it's a think light unlike any other. It's just a little slit at the top of the screen, unlike how it's traditionally built. Now, one of the cool things that it does have going for it is that unlike your standard T-Series, which has a bunch of removable panels on the bottom to get to the components that require a screwdriver, to get into this, and I won't spoil it too much, is actually the initial process is completely toolless. And we'll talk more about that later. It also has GeForce uh, GPUs. It's got a much larger click pad, of course, and it was one of the very first ThinkPads to have the glowing eye in the actual ThinkPad logo. So as you can see, considerably larger trackpad than what we have here, and no buttons along the bottom. Ironically, this is the sort of format that they would go back to after the 40 series click pad just didn't. So the T430U, only features one display panel, which is a bit unfortunate. It is a 14 inch 1366 by 768 200 nit panel. And I can imagine the corners of your mouth dropping lower and lower each time I gave you a spec on that. There is some curiosity, however, if some upgrades can't be uh, done to it, but I haven't read too much into it. But if I do make any attempts, I'll be sure to let you know. In terms of CPUs, we are running all U-series CPUs. Uh, you had an i3, an i5, and an i7, all third generation. And I'll just list them up there on the screen for you. 
you did have Intel HD 4000 graphics and an NVIDIA GeForce 620M 1 gigabyte dedicated GPU. RAM was also 16 gigabytes of DDR3, PC3 12800, 1600 MHz. So the specs are actually pretty decent and it kind of earned that Ultrabook moniker within the T series lineup. Other options included Bluetooth 4.0, an optional fingerprint reader, and Wi Fi and M SATA with WAN. Wi Fi, of course, was standard, and there is an M SATA slot on the inside which can support a WAN card as well. So let's spend a little bit of time and do a quick tour of some of the ports and features. So we have a complete delete of all of the uh, kind of quick shortcut keys and they've moved to the F row, which is where they are to this day. We do have a power button over here. This cutout shows where the fingerprint reader would have been if it was included on this model. Up at the top, we do have a webcam and of course that really crazy cool Think light that I don't recall seeing another design quite like it on any other ThinkPad. And if we tour our ports on the left hand side, we have the Kensington lock slot and exhaust, as well as a SD card slot. Along the front, we have absolutely nothing. And then along the right hand side, we have the standard barrel plug, ethernet, two USB 3.0, and a headphone microphone combo jack. And along the back, the ports don't stop. So over here, we have a mini display port. We have the tray for a SIM card. We have a full-size HDMI port, and then we have the uh, side or the rear fan exhaust. But this is one of the coolest things probably about this ThinkPad is how you disassemble it. And it's simple. You move the catch to the side, you just grab the bottom panel, and you're in. Now, it's not quite that easy, because you'll note that there are only a handful of components staring us in the face. We do have, of course, our standard two and a half inch drive bay held in with two screws. We do have a connector that runs to the other side of the board. We do have easy access, however, to blow out the main fan, and then the battery can easily be removed with two screws and then unplugged from here. To gain access to everything else that you would want to upgrade, we need to locate the keyboard uh, screw removal pictograms. There's one here, which also doubles, I believe, as one for the battery. And then we have one located up here that we just need to put our screwdriver in and spin that out. Now, with those two screws removed, that one, of course, being already missing, move that off to the side, we can turn the T430U upside down or right side up, I should say, wiggle the keyboard back and simply remove it like we would normally. Now, there are two ribbons that you're not gonna be able to see from that angle, so I'm gonna turn the computer around like so, that you need to remove. I'm gonna keep them plugged in for now, only because we can easily see all of the main connectors that we would need uh, to disassemble this the rest of the way. So you can see that we do have a use of reinforced shields on both sides just to keep this thing thin and light. And we have cutouts everywhere that we need to access things. We obviously have the one ribbon for the track point. We have the one ribbon for the keyboard. We have the two RAM slots here, which we've got four gigabytes each in those two slots. We do have our Wi-Fi card over here. This is the M SATA slot where we would expect to see our WAN card, um, but I'm quite certain that you could also install a uh, M SATA SSD for some additional storage in there without any real difficulty. We also have the CMOS battery over here through another cutout and then access to other ribbon cables that we would need to disconnect very likely uh, for the trackpad and fingerprint reader if they were equipped on this model. And finishing all that off, we have some connectors over here as well. And really, the space is well used and really uh, cool just to see a completely different design ThinkPad when it, came, when it comes to the inside, but also the disassembly. This thing is exceptionally unique and I think unfortunately um, overlooked very often because it breaks form in so many ways. And I don't mean that in a bad way. If you want to think about maybe an experiment that didn't go quite right, take a look at the T431 because that thing 
was experimenting with all sorts of new things that some did not stick with us. So I'm going to reassemble this machine, show you some boot times, and we'll do a few more conclusions. All right, let's go ahead and turn this thing on. I'm actually really impressed with how quick that is. Like that's modern speeds. And yeah, the panel is nothing to write home about. It is not very great to look at, but the thin nature, the unique nature, this to me is a ThinkPad that is required in any serious or even casual collector's um, collection. Now, I imagine a device like this is going to have some pretty polarizing opinions, and I'd really like to hear uh, what you think in the comment section down below, especially if you've used one of these for any length of time. To me, this was a mix of both uh, what they were looking to try and what they knew uh, was already a success. And even though the U series would not last within the T series, or I think anywhere, but the lessons learned are very clearly imprinted throughout the modern ThinkPad lineup. And between the T431 and this, to me, this was the much more successful um, find out device. They were definitely trying a whole lot of new different things. And I think this was probably the better combination of those efforts, even if it did come with a few compromises. Once again, I want to thank Kenesh for sending this example to me uh, for safekeeping. What a phenomenal piece of kit. Um, I really enjoy looking at it and using this thing. To me, it's just it's just neat. All of the different things that they, they tried on it that worked. And I hope you enjoyed uh, me sharing it with you. If you do have any questions or comments, leave them in that comment section down below. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.